today. Is the Game Awards People's Voice Award just a popularity contest? Kinda. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where I'm getting into the holiday spirit by curling A. Christmas lights around the trees in my garden to bring joy to the neighborhood. B. Into a little ball because capitalism is slowly killing all of us. Or C. The sentence is complete as it stands. Uh, um, C? Trick question. It was A and B. You can't find sheet time in December. So many bond spiels. A Calgary man has learned to not leave his PlayStation controllers lying around. It almost caused his credit rating to go to the dogs. According to a CBC News story that was not tagged as on the lighter side, despite being sandwiched between stories of our overwhelmed healthcare system and a failed coup in Peru, David Murphy left his one-year-old fur baby Zoe unattended, and the playful pup used the opportunity to gnaw on one of his PS4 controllers, chewing off both the joysticks and the back buttons. But Zoe didn't stop there. She also figured out how to hold down the X button for long enough to launch a game and make in-app purchases. In the game, and I am not shitting you, Watch Dogs. No word whether or not she bought Aiden Pierce's iconic hat, which of course is so iconic that you absolutely notice that this isn't a picture of the iconic hat. That apparently is. But the most bizarre thing about this story, PlayStation actually refunded the purchases. It's Sonic's 30th anniversary, and when you turn 30, it means you can participate in more adult activities, like alleged voting chicanery. Sonic Frontiers is one of five games in 2022's Player's Voice category at The Game Awards, coming up later tonight during The Game Trailers. A brief aside for anyone wondering why The Game Awards is 70% trailer weight by volume, that's due to CanCon rules, as in how many people can we con into watching three hours of ads for games they'll add to their Steam wish list and forget about, then see them pop up during the Steam All Saints Day sale for an inevitable 80% price drop, only to buy them for their ever-increasing backlog while they marvel at the trailers during next year's The Game Awards. But back to Sonic, and 2022's Sonic Frontiers specifically, which is one of the five games in the Player's Voice shortlist, joining 2022's God of War Ragnarok, 2022's Stray, 2022's Elden Ring, and 2020's Genshin Impact. Huh, that's weird. That's, it's probably nothing. Anyway, all the OC Hedgehog Don't Steals and intense waifu generators have been having a big internet dust up, accusing each other of bribery, robots, ballot stuffing, general uncleanliness, and mild to moderate motherfucking. Let's take a quick look. A Sega senior PR manager did their fucking job by tweeting, hey Sonic fans, go vote for Sonic Frontiers. Dastardly. Also, Genshin Impact Dev's Hoyoverse gave out free gacha rolls in 2021 to celebrate when 2020's Genshin Impact won the best mobile game of 2021. So people are expecting more free gacha rolls are coming when their 2020 game wins this 2022 award. There's that weird feeling again. Uh, then some other people tweeted that during the voting process, they couldn't click on anything but Sonic Frontiers or 2020's Genshin Impact initially, though they could select a different option once they've clicked either of those first. And if you know how voting works, people will just stop. Like, seriously, if something gets fucked up while I'm trying to fill out a survey on my grocery shopping where, where I could win $1,000 just for filling it out, I will just go away. And I expect most of you do too. So yeah, this actually did need to get fixed. Then at some point, the Sonic the Hedgehog subreddit, or one of them anyway, who knows which one is safe for work, the Sonic the Hedgehog subreddit got sick of seeing all of the accusations and griping and has essentially just banned talking about the voting altogether. It's all particularly stupid, and you shouldn't care, but man, is it funny to watch two groups of people fight about something I don't care about and therefore doesn't matter. And why doesn't it matter? Well, Jeff Keighley himself chimed in to say, quote, this is part of the reason we don't have 100% fan voting in the main categories. 
proving that despite the absolutely capitalist nature of the Game Awards, Jeff is doing his damnedest to at least make it feel like a Game Award is worth something to the developers. And the easiest way to do that is to reduce the chances of it just being a contest of who can drive the most fan engagement. So he knows that the 100% fan voted player's voice award is just to mollify hundreds of thousands of loud opinionated idiots who don't have the benefit of a show like this one as a place to share my opinion. My advice, make a list of any indie game that was either nominated or won an award this year and go play those. Supporting them will have more impact than a chili cheese dog. Who likes follow-ups? Well, tough, you're getting one anyway. As previously reported, the Smash World Tour Smash Brothers Tournament Circuit was forced to shut down its 2022 championships and its 2023 season after Nintendo would not give them an official license, while at the same time partnering with Panda Global, running their own Smash Brothers Circuit, and of whom Smash World Tour alleges were privately talking smack to tournament organizers and possibly to Nintendo themselves. Well, there have been some statements. Many statements, in fact. Nintendo, for their part, stated, quote, The decision was not influenced by any external parties, such as Panda Global. Any partner that we grant a license to has to meet the high standards we require when it comes to the health and safety of our fans. Without clarifying exactly what Smash World Tour might have been doing that would affect health and safety? And further, Nintendo states, quote, When we notified the SWT that we would not license their 2022 or 2023 activities, we also let them know verbally that we were not requiring they cancel the 2022 finals event because of the impact it would have on the players. Thus, the decision to cancel the SWT 2022 was, and still is, their own choice. This came as quite a shock to Smash World Tour, who, in their words, are struggling to understand that if Nintendo didn't want them to cancel the 2022 championships, why did they tell them they did in writing and then tell them over the phone that the days of operating the Smash World Tour without a license were over? So Smash World Tour is no less confused, but since Nintendo have, in a tremendously awkward manner, said the 2022 championships are fine, hopefully they can still happen so there can be some closure. And speaking of closure, what about Panda Global? Well, we don't know exactly why. Maybe purely because of this story, or maybe this was just the final straw, but a lot of Panda's contracted players have left the organization, as many as 80% by some estimates. As a result, Panda's CEO, Alan Bunny, has stepped down or been forced out, and Panda released a statement that they are, quote, committed to demonstrating our dedication to the community and everyone who shares our passion which will be a nice change, considering there are credible allegations that Bunny was, quote, running a protection racket to convince tournaments to sign with Panda. But now we can all move on to a fresh page of the... He still owns the company. He's not the CEO anymore, but he still merely owns Panda. So, yeah. It's still Sonic's 30th anniversary, and to celebrate, Sonic's dad is going to jail! AGAIN! Remember how we told you last week that Sonic Team member Yuji Naka had been charged with insider trading while working at Square Enix? Well, he's under arrest for the second time for the same crime. Prior to the February 2021 announcement of Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, Naka and his Square Enix colleague Taisuke Sazaki both bought shares in its developer A-Team because they thought they'd make out like bandits. I'm guessing, like through the masks or something and shooting their pistols in the air. I don't really know how bandits make out. Anyway, for the Dragon Quest tact caper back in 2020, Naka only invested about 20,000 US dollars in developer aiming, but I imagine he must have been more emboldened by 2021 since he purchased over 1 million US dollars of shares in A-Team. And honestly, I feel a little bad for doubting Naka in the previous story. We totally thought it was pretty short-sighted to only earn a little scratch on the first breaking of the law. But hey, he really came through on the whole graft and greed meter. The investigation is ongoing, so is there a chance we'll see more fire from all this smoke? 
I hope so. Seriously, him getting pinched again is a way more entertaining sequel compared to anything else Sonic Team has released in years. All this time, I figured he got fired because everyone else could tell Balan Wonderworld was going to be an utter disaster, but now it's more and more likely he got fired for just being a bad person who sucks? Hey now. Both can be true. Hmm. Coming up, if you like Ultra Kill, but haven't picked it up because it doesn't give you an orgasm, good news, they've added buttplug.io support. Please do not let me know what happens when you flip the coin. That's why I don't buy most games. Uh, uh, they don't have a coin or they don't have buttplug.io They support? don't give me an orgasm. Oh, that, okay, yeah, that's fair, yeah. that's fair. Buttplug.io, you have a lot of work cut out for you, I guess. <laughs> You know, I, I'm. I love that they watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I. You know, after all, like, they have to see what their CEO's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Say the name of the city again. Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. If it's fast, then you don't sound like a foreigner. Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. Calgary. Yeah. yeah all right. Cal. A Calgary man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But back to Sonic and Sonic. Uh. F -f 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 fuck. <laughs> Dinger. Yeah. Question for you, Mr. <laughs> Calgary. Yeah. What's the name of the, of the new Sonic game? Sonic Frontiers. What did I say? No, it's okay. It that, is that's Sonic a, Frontiers, right? Yeah, it is Sonic Frontiers. Great. You were saying Frontiers the, in just an odd... Oh. You just had an odd Fron delivery. Frontiers. Frontiers, yeah. That's that's how I see it and pronounce it. Not, right. Not Frontiers. Like, like the... Final Frontier, yeah. Yeah. Frontiers is how a lot of times I will pronounce that word. Well, yes. How do you pronounce the metal from which steel is derived? Iron. You said it right that time. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, but Weird. you press your clothes with an iron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now someone's phoning me. I bet this one's fake. So if you're curious, I am. We were talking. No, not not you. You you know this, but yeah. if you, the viewer at home, are curious, uh -huh. um, how the game awards actually functions for the other awards, because I was curious too. Yeah. 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 The, so they have a they have a jury, which is uh, it's massive. Yeah. And it's it's basically it's. Media and influencing entities. Yeah, that that report on video games. So, like, obviously, like... Um, Polygon. GameSpot. You IGN. Know, yeah, but also, like, Vice, because they do video games. Or <laughs> or from Canada, the CBC, because they will cover video games. Yeah. Um, and uh, they say that the, the editorial department i mm -hmm. guess so it's not just one because i was thinking <laughs> my worry was that like someone meanders into the to the games to the game review section and is like yo jeff needs this form this google form filled out who wants it give it to ricky the intern i don't got time for this all right ricky do you tell keely what games you like yeah uh, but no apparently it's the the editorial staff converges and they they send a uh, an unranked list yeah of uh what they think the five best games for a given category are right and again unranked in the it's just five yep uh, and then across all of the responses and you can go to their website and see they'll they'll tell you yeah. it's people from around the world mostly centered in the u.s a bunch from the uk and then two or three from various other countries all yeah. over um then they will the Smush games all that together yeah the, and the games that show up the most often uh, become the five nominees or six or seven in the cases that there's ties. Yeah. Uh, and then from from that and 10% of people's of uh, general public voting. public, yeah. Yeah, so 90% based on the jury um, suggestions, 10% based on the public. That's, that's the Game Awards. And I love this part of the FAQ. <laughs> Jeff Keighley, the producer of the Game Awards, is not part of the jury process, has no bearing on the, uh, is is not part of the voting at all, and the entire advisory board of the Game Awards finds out who actually wins at the same time everybody else does during right. the show. Yeah. Because I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, yeah. it's, Jeff just picks them all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's not a bad system. No. And really, I mean, that's the kind of what you hope for, is that ultimately it is like a lot of people saying this. Now, the, the wrinkle that I've always had is like well shouldn't it also shouldn't it include game development people mm. like not just mm -hmm. journalists influencers like whatever who are part of that category oh right but and 
that's that's is whatever. That's we were talking about how that's like the Academy of Motion Picture and Sciences versus the Hollywood Foreign Press. Yeah, so the Oscars versus the Golden Globes. Right. That you have like there's two different sets of awards in that category. And maybe game developers do need to make their own guild and then have their own thing. Like IGDA does, right? It's yeah. like IGDA has their own thing where they all vote and on GDC it. has stuff, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like elevation of those other awards is probably a good idea too you know seeing people put those on their games more often or not but what i thought was cool is they said hey so for the esports categories mm. we don't ask everybody we just look for the people who actually report on and know stuff about esports the esports and accessibility and oh shoot there was yeah. there was another one where they have um specific jury groups for you dedicated to that obvious reasons yeah. i would think you know people who actually know what they're talking about yeah uh, it is. But they don't make it clear about what those groups are, like who's a member of those teams, because in uh, no, a no, way, no, no, they're on. Oh, there. Do they actually think? Yep. Goodness, okay. Because I'm like, you don't want to let people know. Like this happened to the academy, right? Where it was like, once people started to find out who was actually voting in the academy, people were were mad because they were like, hey, wait a second, and they're like, well, we kept it secret because we didn't want people to like get mad at somebody who's voting on somebody else's movie or whatever. We don't want that kind of like thing hanging over their heads. Mm -hmm. But also it's like it revealed that, oh, you didn't have a very diverse group of people doing all this voting. You had like these people who've been on the thing for 40 or 50 years and are part of a certain Hollywood contingent. So yeah, knowing who's on the team is a great idea, but also keeping people secret who's on the team is also a good idea. So there's a, there's, you know, yeah, a little in each hand. It looks like there's more than a dozen different esports specific outlets that do the esports stuff and then accessibility is a combination of uh groups and individuals yeah like uh, steve spawn from able gamers um so yeah it, i mean <laughs> we give we give the game awards justifiably quite a bit of stick yeah. but uh you know the actual like awards process is i think is pretty above board handled fairly well yeah. we were saying that what they need <laughs> is a nickname for the award. The yes. actual award with the, the woman with the wings looks really nice, yeah. right? But it's always the game awards. Yeah. It's not the Oscars, or because it's the Academy Awards. Yeah. The award is the Oscar, but people call it the Oscars. Yes. Right? And the you know, Grammys or Emmys or whatever. So we, we need we need a thing for this. Yeah. Um, and, and I was like, it can't be the Beckys just because it's like... Oh my God, you know, Becky. It has to, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, but maybe you call it the Keeleys. <laughs> And I don't know. I think I think Jeff would not like that, and he that might would, be kind of funny. As a but as a Canadian, I'm sure I'm sure that Jeff would hate that. But it would drive me nuts if somebody named an award after me. I think the key, I've seen people call them the Keelys, and I yeah. think it's. I mean, this is what I'm saying, Jeff. If you're watching, you're not watching. No. But if you're watching, you got to get it ahead of this. Yeah. Or they're going to become the Keelys, right? Yeah. It's going to be like the 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 uh, you know like Xerox and Kleenex, the trademark oh, yeah. thing, right? Yeah. People are just going to start calling them the Keelys, and eventually you're going to have to be like. Fuck, I guess they're the Keeley. Yeah, no, you need to find a name for these things too sweet. Yeah. And, and so that nobody can do that anymore. Uh, also, if you are watching, please talk to your advisory board and tell them that we're also technically a journalist outlet for video games and that we need to be on this committee. Technically speaking, that's yeah. true. I've done a real journalism <laughs> we, more than once. We shit on so many games here that I think we probably deserve to actually give some an award. <laughs> we, we, we shit on the stupid things. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. We make, we'll have the checkies one year. I think we've done that before, Have but it we? was it was all in jest, if I recall correctly. Oh, okay, I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of things. I mean, things start as a joke and then eventually become a real thing, right? Yeah, like that's ceiling egg is still up there, and in our hearts. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye.